So what we'll do now is let's go into an example uh, where we have to kind of make some decisions about how to do this analysis. Um, and it's, it's not always entirely straightforward, but uh, this example is a, uh, we, we have a microchip here, we have some uh, transistor, and that transi transistor is mounted to some, say, aluminum base. So think of this being um, like a, there's something called field effect transistors where you're, you're trying to amplify some signal. You've got a, a r relatively large current going through a device, and you're trying to switch that current back and forth. Maybe it's pulse width modulation or something like that. Right, so you have this basically chip that's um, switching on and off, and every time it switches on or switches off, it, there's a bit of inefficiency in that process. Uh, and you generate some heat. Right? So you gener you're generating heat inside this chip. Um, the chip itself, because it's a semiconductor, it can't be mounted directly to a piece of metal. You have to have some layer in here. So you have this kind of insulating dielectric layer. And uh, our job is to make sure this thing doesn't melt. Right? The, the electronics guys are just de designing the chip. Your job is to make sure this thing doesn't fail. Um, so we come up with this really simple model to, to figure out where, you know, are, are we roughly OK? Where do we need to focus our effort? Um, so what do we know about this? It's, uh, here's, we've got geometry up here. Um, the, what we'll call the spreader. This is the thermal spreader. That's bigger than the chip. We have generation, and we're approximating that to be 5 watts. And we're approximating that to happen at the worst possible place, which is at the very top. Um, what else? Some conductivity and stuff. So we have, I think, the, the information that we need. The other thing that's important is we're assuming that there's water cooling down here on this surface. Uh, there's air cooling from convection and radiation up here. And that this chip is maybe mounted on a panel where it repeats. And so these boundaries, due to symmetry, are adiabatic. OK? Sure. So just from like uh, from from maybe an armchair position, what we what we can observe is we know that there's air cooling up here, there's water cooling down here. So the water cooling is probably going to be more effective, right? That means we go through the analysis and maybe decide this. But the water cooling is more effective. That means heat's going to prefer to go this way. So if he's preferring to go this way, what's the worst possible sure. thing? You, you, we're worried about thermal runaway. All the heat's being generated at the furthest uh, possible position. Right? That's kind of how that was decided. But it's, it's more of a looking back at the problem observation and not something that you'd know right off the top of the bat. Um, the other thing that is important is we're assuming that this is 5 watts, but maybe this assumption is at a certain temperature. It turns out as these, as these uh, chips get hotter, they get less efficient. Right, so you, we've maybe assumed this is operating at a certain temperature. It becomes less efficient as it gets hotter, so that generation goes up as it gets hotter, which means you could have thermal runaway, right? which is, means it's going to melt. <laughs> it's going to fail. All right, so let's go through this, um, this example and kind of do what we did just in our last little uh, small example. We'll start by building a resistance network um, and, and use that to then inform our modeling. So let's see. Let's start where? So let's start on the air side on the top. I'm going to draw it again. I'm going to draw it uh, vertically over here on the right side. So let's start up here on the top. We have a known temperature TA. That's our air temperature. Um, and then let's draw a node here. And let's, uh, let's call this, what, I don't know, T. Yeah, I don't, we don't really need it. Let's call this T surface. Uh, I'm sorry, let's do this. Let's call this T chip. Uh, T chip, that's good enough. I don't think we're going to actually use it. But we'll call it that for now. OK, so I have the possibility of heat flowing from air to chip or vice versa. What are the ways in which heat can flow? There's two. Yes. And I have convection and radiation. And are those happening in series or in parallel? parallel. Right. So I'm going to draw a resistance that splits. And I have one resistance that goes like this. 
and one resistance that goes like this. And I'm going to label one of them, what? I'm going to label one of them radiation, so R, uh, well, convection first over here, A, and then R, radiation, A over here. All right, so R, radiation to the air, and R, convection to the air. Uh, and then that's going to this, this surface here. So now we have to go uh, keep, keep building our resistance network. So then we have what? another resistance due to conduction across that um, across the chip. So let's call this R conduction C. Uh, let's see, we have a another conduction across the dielectric, which is R conduction D. Uh, then we have what, our conduction across the spreader, our conduction S. And we have uh, now con just convection on the bottom out to the water, our convection W. All right, and then out here we have our TW. Um, what I haven't yet drawn is any like heat flow. So we know that we're adding G dot right here at the T-chip position. So I'm going to draw an arrow coming in here, call that G dot. That's the generation that's occurring. It's being applied to that node. Um, I could then draw heat flows like this, right? I could have a heat flow going up. I could have a heat flow going down. So we could call this maybe you know Q dot um, air and call this Q dot water. And I could also go through and label all the different temperatures if I wanted to. But this now gives me at least an idea of the way that heat's going to move through the system and, and uh, gives us a chance to make an assessment of what's important. All right, um, let's see. We can go through, let's see, for the sake of time, maybe I'll just do this really quickly. But let's go through and write out what the resistance uh, equations are for each of these. So let's look. Let's start with um, let's start with the chip. So our conduction C is going to be the dis the length of conduction, which is thickness of the chip, right in that direction. Um, so it's going to be thickness of the chip over the conductivity of the chip times uh, the cross sectional area of the chip, which is uh, if we look back. So I'll just flip back. We have WC and WS as the important dimensions up there on top. So that's uh, WC squared. Right? That's our chip thermal resistance. Uh, the dielectric, we have our conduction D. That is thickness D over, uh, let's say, KD times W squared C. We have the spreader, which is our conduction S. That's going to be thickness of the spreader divided by K of the spreader times, well, what area? WS, right? So that was W squared S. That's this, uh, this dimension here. All right, so let's see, making progress here. What else do we have? We have the convection, so R convection on the air side, that's going to be uh, 1 over the surface area that's exposed, which is W squared C times H bar A. We have the water, our convection water. That is 1 over W squared S times H bar W. And then we have, let's see, radiation. So our radiation A, which is, um, let's see, 1 over the whole thing, which is epsilon sigma W squared C TC plus TA times TC squared plus TA squared. Right? That's the exact uh, formula for radiation. OK, so we have all, our, all of our resistances. We could take all this and plug it into E's, but we still need to do an energy balance somewhere. right? And the where, the where is going to be here on this T-chip node. We have G dot, Q dot, uh, Q dot W, and Q dot A. Okay, so let's see. 
our energy balance, we could just combine all that together and we ended up end up with, uh, let's see, what's coming in is g dot uh, and what's going out is going to be the sum of the two q dot, uh, the two other q dots. And let's just write that in terms of the actual temperature difference over the total resistance. So the temperature difference, let's see, between the chip and let's which side first? Let's see. Uh, temperature difference between the chip and the water. Uh, that's going to have wait, so T C minus T W divided by all the resistances that fall between those two temperatures, which is going to be a bunch of stuff, R conduction C plus R conduction D plus R conduction S plus R convection W, right? That's, this is a heat flow, right? Heat flow Q dot W. Uh, what is also leaving, so we are adding, what's also leaving is Q dot A, and there we have T, I guess I called it T chip, didn't I? T chip, T chip, minus T A, and then the resistance is on the top. So we haven't talked about this, but I think a lot of you have probably seen it before. Here we have the, the parallel resistance, our radiation and our convection. How do we write that? Well, we have to take uh, the quantity. So, sorry, I'm trying to fit this in. So we have one over our convection A plus one over our radiation A. That entire quantity to the minus one power. And so this is the way that you're going to write any parallel resistances. You take Everything that's in parallel is a separate term, one over that thing. Add them up, and then take the inverse of that, and that's your parallel resistance. OK, so now we have our, our energy balance. We have heat flow in, heat flow out. We have a system of equations that we can then solve for this problem. All right, so let's go to, let's go to the computer and look how we do this in ease. All right, I'm not going to make you Watch me type, so I've already got it here. So we've got all of our, our information. I think this is the first time we've talked about ease, but you've mostly all seen it before. Just a few things to note. Enter the quantity, the units, and then convert the units. It's a fail-safe way of doing things. So first enter all your given information, uh, and then we'll start doing our calculations here. So all this stuff up here should match exactly what we have. Now we have our, our uh, resistances that we've just decided again hopefully should should exactly match uh, and then let's see and then our job is to do the energy balance calculation so there's maybe a couple problems right we want to calculate the, re the radiation resistance here which requires the TC the chip temperature which we don't know right we're solving for that value that's the thing we're trying to compute so in order to do this, what we need to do is first uh, provide a guess value. So we'll call this TC guess. And just to start, let's say that this is equal to the air temperature. Right? So again, why am I doing that? We, we can't solve this problem. We don't know what TC is. I have to guess a temperature first just to get it to solve. Um, and, and you want to go through this by solving things in order as much as you can. So let's see. So we do this. I'm going to comment that out. Hopefully it'll work. Uh, 21 equations and 21 variables, that's good. Okay, so it solves. So now we have a, a guess value for TC, that was our air temperature. We're able to compute all of the resistances that we need. Um, we know that the radiation resistance is wrong because TC is not quite the right temperature yet, but we at least have a value for it, right? We can, we can move forward and, and continue to solve the problem. All right, um, so we've now got all the resistances by having to guess a temperature first. So now I go in and I'm going to add in the, uh, the energy balance on TC. So again, hopefully this exactly matches what, we, what we'd written before. If you're not sure, um, let's see, we can look at F, F10. So if you hit F10 on Windows, 
It'll show you the formatted equations. I think you, probably a lot of you have seen this. But it'll give you kind of a nicer representation. It should look more like what you write down. So we have g dot equals tc minus tw over the series resist resistances. And then we have um, tc minus ta over the parallel resistances that, that lines up. That's what we had. OK, so I should be able to solve this. And now I can get back my, uh, let's see, my actual TC. Um, and I can get back, what, all the, the Q dots and G dot. So we aren't, cal we aren't calculating the heat flow, but we've at least uh, applied the energy balance. And we can go back and make sure that things line up. OK, so everything's solved. Now what I want to do is I've guessed this value, right? I use the energy balance to compute TC, but I've guessed this value. I want to now force my guess to equal the actual one that I just computed. So let's get rid of this and comment this out. And now I should be able to solve it. And TCG should equal TC. And yeah, so now I, I see that TCG is TC. And I'm solving for the actual chip temperature, which happens to be 68 and a half degrees Celsius. OK, so that, that's basically how you go about solving this problem. Um, questions on the ease part? Yeah. Yep, it's all, it's all there. So if you go to the uh, files, and then there's like lectures, and then the lecture number, this will, it's in there. Yeah. Is that in there? Uh, it's probably it probably starts off with the last thing I talked about or will talk about, which is this stuff down here. But you you can go back. I mean, the, the basic workflow is this this stuff you can all ent enter explicitly, no issue. Then you just have to be able to calculate the radiation resistance, which requires a guess. So I would just kind of work through it in in that order if you're confused about it. All right. So again, just to summarize the order, guess the radiation, use the energy balance to compute TC, and note again that we're not, we're not saying TC equals a bunch of stuff. We don't have to solve for TC. We just have to include it in the equation and have the right, you know, uh, have the, the right other thing specified. Like G dot is provided, right? G dot specified. Everything else is computed. The only remaining unknown is TC. So Ease is happy to solve that for you. Then we force the guess to equal our computed temperature. Make sure you comment out the original guess. And that will then solve forcing these equations all to line up. OK. All right. Um, so that's, let's see, that's the, that example. Let me just see here. Let's look back at this. All right, so this is the summary results coming out of that. I'm not going to make you, you can copy down the values, but they're on the next page too. But we basically decide that there's a big resistance due to convection, there is a relatively small resistance due to the spreader um, and the, let's see, the chip conduction. Um, so of these, if I were to say something's not important, it probably would be conduction across the chip. And then we have this interesting scenario here, which is, a big resistance from convection and a huge resistance from radiation. So here I've decided which is not important by looking at the smallest value. What about over here? Like which of these is not important? Yeah, why the large one? Yes, exactly. Path of least resistance. So heat's going to find a way and it's going to go around and it doesn't care how big you make that. Right, so I could basically neglect radiation. You could give me back. The homework assignment saying I ne neglect radiation because of that, and it, you don't include it anymore, that's fine, totally fine, right? No, no problem. Um, so, right, so now we, can, now we can really focus in on what's important. 